Okay, so you've watched the video and you've seen a variety of viewpoints and I know this video is dated because they're talking about President Bush and President Bush hasn't been in office for quite some time. But when stem cell research first really got its start back in the early 2000s, the big question was, is there going to be funding for stem cell research, embryonic stem cell research? And within these viewpoints, I think it's important to compare and contrast these two different types of, of embryonic stem cell sources because, as they mentioned, the House of Representatives voted twice to ban all forms of human cloning. So that means that they voted to ban not just reproductive cloning, that most scientists and most people around the world say, yeah, we really don't think that cloning humans is a good idea. Not only to ban reproductive cloning, but also therapeutic cloning, which meant where are you going to get your stem cells from except for blastocysts that are left over from IVF? So I know this isn't a chart that's in your notes. I'd like you to add it in if you could please today. And this chart is highlighting the differences between leftover blastocysts from IVF and therapeutic cloning as these two sources of embryonic stem cells. And remember, with leftover blastocysts, the initial intent was to be producing them to implant into a female, ultimately leading to a child. The possibility was there that that was going to happen. In the case of having leftovers, that meant that this wasn't going to happen anymore and that these embryos were then going to be discarded as medical waste. That if you're going to use them, at least there is some benefit of using them as embryonic stem cell research subjects. Now, that's also a source of ethical concern there too, and certainly there are some people who would say that by itself is wrong, um, but we're going to leave that up to the uh, IVF debate side of things. So this is just a source of embryonic stem cells. The end result would be that the leftover blastocysts were going to be discarded anyway. With therapeutic cloning, there was no intent to use these at all, ever, as any sort of possibility of a human child. Instead, they were simply produced with the intent to do research. In both cases, the blastocyst has to be destroyed in order to get access to those embryonic stem cells. Now, in considering those two possibilities, the intent is there in one case to produce a child, in the other case, the intent is only there to create a blastocyst to do research on it. And I want to take you back about a week or so when I asked you a whole bunch of survey questions about why would somebody be interested in doing human cloning, and I asked your opinions on these. Should we do human cloning to bring back somebody who was famous? Should we do human cloning in case somebody can't have a kid? Should we bring back uh, somebody who maybe died that was somebody's child and bring them back? Should we do human cloning to create an or uh, organism so that they could donate the organs even if they were vital? Or should we create human embryos to be able to learn how uh, the body works and dissect them apart and everything and in most of those cases especially that last one where I was specifically asking you should we be creating human life to destroy it the vast majority of you said no now again in both of these cases the blastocyst is being destroyed but in the case of therapeutic cloning there was never any intent to create something that could have been a child, the only intent was to create a blastocyst to do research on it. And that's where House of Representatives was saying, well, we don't agree with that type of cloning either. We don't want to create a human life to, that is based on reproductive cloning because we're not so sure that that's going to work and that seems morally ethical of a concern. But therapeutic cloning, even more so perhaps, because now you're just creating human life just to destroy it. And that's what the discussion was, is, okay, so then are we going to fund the other type of embryonic stem cell research? And I'm going to come back to that after I have you respond to that issue response. Your stance doesn't make a difference to me. I want you to spend two minutes, though, thinking through those three different responses, the one from the scientists and the one from the clergy and the one from President Bush there, and I want you to think about what your viewpoint is on embryonic stem cell research. Should we be using embryonic stem cells from leftover blastocysts? 
Should we also be allowing embryonic stem cell research from therapeutic cloning sources? Should we not be allowing therapeutic clone, or sorry, should we not be allowing embryonic stem cell research at all? What's your viewpoint on this? Because again, at some point, you're going to be either electing people into positions of power that will make those decisions for you, or you're going to have to make those decisions yourself. Um, take two minutes, do a free write, respond, and then I'll have you watch the next section.